What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Ronette Rollins, with you again for the final night of our fall revival. We're with you on Praise 104.1, as well as My Spirit DC. This week has been absolutely awesome. It has been spirit-filled. It has been anointed. And prayerfully, it has brought you closer to Christ. And prayerfully, it has inspired you to get on through the rest of this year, because we are definitely almost at the end of 2020. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So this week, let me kind of recap who we've had so far. Sunday, we had Evie McKinney and Kelante Gavin, who brought us the word in song. We also had the word of God brought by Reverend Sylvia Sumter uh, of Unity Church of Washington, D.C. On Monday, Tasha Cobbs Leonard and Darius Polk took us through the throne. And then uh, Pastor Burton Sherbert from Kingdom Tabernacle of Refuge Ministries brought us the word of God. On Tuesday, we had guest artists Brian Courtney Wilson and Keandra Lockett. And then Dr. Charlene Monk from New Horizon Christian Faith Church brought us the word. Wednesday, we had Doe, Judah Band, and Jonathan Trailer. And the word of God was brought by Bishop Herbert Jackson of Life Changing Church. Last night, Jabari Johnson and Ricky Dillard gave us the word in song. And then Pastor Sylvia Peoples from the Lord's Church of Transformation followed it up with the word of God. Tonight, 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 the final night, we have musical guest artist Dietrich Haddon as well as Jonathan Nelson, and I am so excited. So our first artist up tonight is Dietrich Haddon. Y'all know he's got hits and hits and hits for days. He's a singer, he's a songwriter, a producer extraordinaire, and he's also an actor. I mean, he's doing it and doing it well for the kingdom of God. So please welcome Dietrich Haddon.
days when I can't see Giving you every part of me Not put me back The piece by piece In you I am complete much Dietrich Haddon. Man, the musicality, the range, the spirituality. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now we take it on over to Baltimore, uh, Baltimore's very own Jonathan Nelson. Now, Jonathan Nelson, when you get the okay from the maestro Donald Lawrence, you know you're doing your thing, musically speaking. You understand what I'm saying? And Jonathan Nelson has surrounded himself with some amazing singers. And he just released Jonathan Nelson and Purpose, The Reunion. You really got to check that out. It is super powerful and super anointed. So here he is now, Jonathan Nelson. Listen, you cannot give up. You got to finish strong. Yeah. Somebody ought to put some fist up. Come on, let's go. Can't give up. You gotta hang on in there. You gotta finish strong. In this race that we run, you gotta have endurance, cause it's a marathon. I was born, sure enough to win. In pursuit with pain, until the end, I'm going to have a strong
if you got strong faith out there, you, you listen, you cannot give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that feel good. That feel good. Just stay right there for a second, Corey. Somebody got to start typing on the, sc the screen. Say, I cannot give up. I got to finish strong. Tell somebody that's in the chat. Tell them you can't give up. You got to finish strong. No, 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 for real. Bro. You got, you, you can't give up. You got to finish strong. This year has brought a lot of unexpected, it's been unprecedented, a lot of unexpected pain, sorrow, issues, weirdness, trouble. I know we're in the midst of a pandemic, but whatever you do, don't be too isolated where you still can't give God praise. Don't be too isolated where you can't keep pressing. So you need to give yourself a own pray, your own praise party in your house tonight. Get on up out of that seat and just start clapping your hands and singing. Come on, everybody. Listen, strong. Everybody, lift it up. Strong. Everybody, lift it up. Strong. Uh -huh, we're saying strong. Say it. Strong. Put some harmony on it, y'all. told you he surrounds himself with some amazing singers. Thank you so much, Jonathan Nelson. Now, you guys be sure to support the artists that participated and also the preachers that participated as well. Support them online, get their products, purchase their stuff, and let them know that they are important to the body of Christ, okay? Now, it's time for the Word of God on this final night of our fall revival. And we are excited to have Dr. Maurice Watson, the pastor of the historic Metropolitan Baptist Church to give us our final word of our fall revival. So I hope you are ready. Get your Bibles in your hand, or if you like me, get your phone in your hand because, you know, I, I just read it off my phone. And let's get ready to hear the word of God from Pastor Maurice Watson. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you are glad to once again be in the house of the Lord today? I am so delighted to come to you this morning to share another word from the Lord, from the word of God. Amen. And today I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Numbers, the Old Testament book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 11. And I want to read into your hearing verses 1 through 3. Now the reality is that I'm going to also be referring to several other verses in this 11th chapter, but uh, because the text is so long and our time is somewhat short, I'm just going to read into your hearing verses 1 through 3. I'm reading from the New King James Bible, Numbers, Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Here's how my Bible reads. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tabarath, because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. I want to talk today simply about no right to complain. No right to complain. Ken, Ken Crockett uh, tells the following story. He says, a friend of mine lives on the coast of Florida, a few miles uh, from the Kennedy Space Center. I told him it must be fun watching the space shuttle launches and going to the beach all the time. His friend said, I never go to the beach and I don't even go outside my house to watch the space shuttle launch. You're kidding me. Why not? I asked him. He said, I've seen it so many times that it's no big deal. You know, brothers and sisters, when we see the same blessings every day, we have a tendency to stop noticing them. And when we stop noticing them, we stop appreciating. And when we stop appreciating, we stop thanking. And when we stop thanking, we usually start complaining. 
Crockett tells another story about a pessimistic man who spotted some money crumbled up on the ground. He picked it up, unwatered it, and discovered that it was a dollar bill. He said, that's just my luck, the man complained. <laughs> if someone else had found it, it would have been a $5 bill. Complainers look at the negative side of every situation. They don't give thanks for what they have, but they gripe because it is not more. So the question that I want to ask today is simply this. Are you thankful or are you a complainer? Someone has suggested that complaining is like bad breath. You notice it when it comes out of other people's mouths, but not your own. All of us are guilty of complaining from time to time, aren't we? It's human nature that when things don't go the way that we want them to go, or when circumstances aren't ideal, when situations don't line up the way we want them to, it's a common response to complain. But have you ever stopped to consider the fact that excessive, unnecessarily, unnecessary, and unjustified complaining is a moral issue? Now, when we talk about sin, we usually think of those things that the Ten Commandments forbid us from uh, to do. You know, we think of the, the thou shalt not, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not lie. However, there is another sin that we have overlooked, and it can have just as much of a damaging effect upon us as the breaking of the Ten Commandments. This sin is called complaining. Therefore, today, what I want to point out is how it displeases the Lord when we are unjustifiably dissatisfied and when we complain because things in our lives are not exactly like we want them to be. Perhaps there is no group of people who fits this description more than the children of Israel. In our text, they had been released from slavery in Egypt and they were en route to the land that God had promised to give them uh, they, they had not long uh, now crossed the Red Sea. They were near the borders of, of Canaan, the land that flowed with milk and honey. Yonder they go, some, some 600,000 strong, not including the women and children, on their way to Canaan. Yonder they go, following the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And after being in in slavery and in bondage for centuries, they are actually free. But at the time of this text, something was wrong with Israel. They should have been happy. They should have been rejoicing. They should have been smiling with gladness, but something was wrong. There was an unhappy look on their faces. You don't mind if I talk to them for a little while this morning, do you? What's wrong, children? Why are you unhappy? What's Wrong, children. Why is there a look of discontentment upon your faces? What's wrong, children? Why are your lips poked out? What's wrong, children? Why does your stature sag? What's wrong, children? Why are your heads bowed down toward the ground? I'll tell you what was going on. Israel's problem was that they had a complaint against the Lord. Uh, and, and, and their complaint sounds, friends, like a, a whole lot like our complaints today. But Israel had no right to complain, and neither do we. Even on the worst day of your life, when the worst thing that, could ever, that you could ever think of could happen to you, and yes, even in the middle of this pandemic, you and I have no right to complain. Let me share with you what I see in this passage. I'll make some comments and I'll soon be in my seat. First of all, I believe we have no right to complain in the first place because when we complain, we displayed a wrong attitude toward God. When we complain, we displayed a wrong attitude toward God. Listen to how verse 1 of Numbers 11 opens up. Now when the people complained. This passage is a recording of the beginnings of the murmurings of Israel. God had been good to them, but Israel had a long record of complaining in spite of all that God had done for them. They often found something about which to complain. They no longer had to experience the hideous and horrible conditions of Egypt, but they complained. No more slavery, yet they complained. No more Pharaoh, yet they complained. 
No more work without pay, yet they complain. No more uh, making bricks without straw, yet they complained. No more taskmasters standing over them, yet they complained. No more hearing of the cracking of the rawhide whips that tore the skin from their backs, yet they complain. It appears that they had forgotten God's goodness, that they had forgotten from whence God had brought them. But... Before we look at them with dismay and disgust, could it be said that the same is true of us today? We no longer have to deal with some of the issues that our forefathers and mothers had to endure in the past, yet we complain. We are living better than we've ever lived, yet we complain. We are driving better than we've ever driven. We are, we are dressing better than we've ever dressed. We are making more money than we've ever made, yet we complain. Usually, people complain because they are dissatisfied. And that's what was going on with Israel. That was Israel's problem. Israel often found something about which to be dissatisfied. Their wants were insatiable. That no matter what God did for them, they found something, some, some reason to complain. Uh, when they were thirsty out in the wilderness, they complained, we're going to die of thirst out here. So God gave them water from a rock. When they became hungry, they began to complain, we're going to starve to death. So God sent them some holy groceries from heaven called manna. Manna was uh, like small pearls of bread that God sent every morning when the dew fell, that God gave it to them freshly every day. They didn't have to work for the manna. All they had to do was pick it up. But when we come to our text, they are now dissatisfied with the manna. They said to God in Numbers 11, we don't want this manna anymore. We, we, we want you to change your menu, change the menu. We are tired of eating the same old thing. We want some meat. We want something solid. We, we, we don't want the, the provisions the, 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 that you've been given to us, the way you've been given to them to us. We want some meat. And look at what happens in verses 4 and following in Numbers 11. The Bible says, beginning at verse 4, Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept and, again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There's nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Listen to how ungrateful Israel was. They said, we are tired, God, of you giving us uh, of what you want us to have. We are tired of you providing uh, of, of the way that you are providing for us. We want some meat, Lord. We want something more substantial than this manna. You know, when you and I complain, we are really telling God, you know what we're telling God? God, you don't know how to provide for me. You must not know how to meet my needs because if you knew how to meet my needs, then everything would go the way I want them to go in life. Uh, if you knew how to meet my needs, I'd, I'd be able to drive like I want to drive. I'd live like I want to like I, like I want to live. I make the kind of money that I think I'm, I deserve. But God, obviously, you don't know how to take care of my needs. When we complain, we have the wrong attitude, friends, toward God. When we complain, friend, we are actually rejecting God. So watch what happens in verses 18 and 20, 18 through 20 of Numbers 11. The Lord told Moses, he said, then he said, then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourselves for the morrow, tomorrow uh, you shall eat meat for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us uh, meat, uh, uh, meat to eat? For it, it, for it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and it becomes loathsome to you because you uh, have uh, uh, displeased the Lord who is among you and has wept before him saying, why did we ever come up out of Egypt? God says, I tell you what, uh, you're complaining about the manna. 
that I've been giving you every morning. You don't want this manna anymore, Israel. Uh, I, well, I'm going to give you what you've been complaining about. I'm going to give you what you've been begging me for. I'm going to give you some meat, not just for one or two days, but for a whole month. And you're going to have so much meat until it's going to be coming out of your nostrils, and you're going to be, become so sick of eating it that, you'll be, that it'll become loathsome to you. You know, friends, you got to be careful. Be careful how much you complain about what you don't have because God just might give it to you and you will hate the day that 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 that, that you ever got it to some single person that today has been complaining I can't find nobody to marry me or to date me listen what you're gonna do just go out and marry the first person that you meet if you're not careful friends you can get ahead of God and marry someone that's outside of the will of God for your life and so you'll finally get what you've been wanting but you'll end up in the long run regretting that you ever said I do remember friends that when God made Adam and Eve remember that that he made Adam first and for a while on this earth the only two people on the earth was Adam and God and when Adam and God were alone on earth that gave Adam a chance to work on the most important relationship in his life his personal relationship with God only after Adam got that relationship right that God blessed him with Eve so single Christians while you're single this is your time to get your relationship right with God because your most important relationship is your relationship with the Lord because if you don't know how to love God you certainly won't know how to love somebody else nor even how to love yourself am I talking to someone who spent all of their lives trying to amass the stuff that you've acquired and now you are you know in a sense that you're sitting on top of the pile of money and investments and material things that you have you got it all but at what cost you, you, you lost your family, your children can't stand you, and on your deathbed, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself saying, I wish I had been a better father uh, or a better mother to my children. I wish I had spent more time with my children. When we complain, God just might give us what we've been complaining about and we'll regret the day that we ever got it. You know, we complain about everything. Some of us are like professional complainers. I know, I mean, no matter what, we complain about our job. I don't like this job. I just hate this job. I don't like this job. Well, listen, can you remember the time you were standing in, in an unemployment line? Somebody uh, wished they had a job today. We complain about the, our house. Oh, this house is too small. I need a bigger house. Well, can't you remember uh, the time when you lived in a studio apartment? Uh, one one room studio apartment we complain about our car this car too old it got too many miles on what is better than walking we complain about the food this, this food is too salty this food ain't hot enough we can just complain about we complain about the weather and have you ever stopped thinking about how dumb it is to complain about the weather? It's too hot. It's too cold. Friend, don't you realize that if you are able to be, uh, to, to be, to, to, uh, be out in the weather, that that's a sign that you are still alive? Because it's better to be in the worst weather alive than to be dead and in your grave. We complain about everything. Don't we? Our spouses, our children, we even complain about the church. It's too big or it's this, it's, it's this or it's that or the people over there are not nice. That's that's why we got thousands of churches if you're not happy don't sit up in a church and be unhappy go find one where you can be happy you see friends we complain about almost everything but 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 in America the poorest person in America is a wealthy person compared to people in some third world countries that the old proverb is right that says I complained that I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. All I'm trying to tell you is that as bad as things may seem in your life, look around you and you'll discover that someone is going through much worse. So instead of complaining, you ought to say, Lord, I'm thankful that things are as well as they are. When we complain, we display the wrong attitude toward God. But then secondly, this text is teaching us that we have no right to complain because when we complain, we displease God. Look at verse 1 again. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it and his anger was aroused. Israel complained so much that they made God angry. And friends, it's a dangerous thing. It's a terrible thing. It's an unwise thing to cause God to become angry.
The Lord knew he had been good to Israel. He knew how far he had brought them. He knew he had shown mercy and kindness and grace toward them. And he knew that Israel did not have a justifiable reason to complain. Uh, he had been providing for them uh, their daily needs, but now they were complaining, we don't want this manna anymore. anymore. We want some meat. And it made God mad. It ticked God off because complaining ultimately robs God of his glory. When we complain, we fail to give God the glory. And we question, ultimately, we question God's faithfulness. So look at what transpired in verses 31 to 33 of Numbers 11. Now, a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering near the camp. About a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, about two cubits above the surface of the ground. That is that God caused a quail from the sea to fly in from the sea and hover about three feet above the ground to make it easy for the people to grab uh, uh, the, 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 the quail. The Bible goes on to say, and the people stayed up all that day, all night, and all the next day, and gathered quail. He who gathered least among them gathered ten homers. Uh, the, the Bible says that the, they were gathering these quail that were fluttering about three feet above the ground. And the person that had gathered the least amount of quails gathered ten homers. It is suggested that ten homers of quails represent, if you will, 60 bushels of quail or 500 gallons of quail. The one that gathered the least, some gathered more, gathered 60 bushels of quail. Bible goes on to say, and they spread them out for themselves all around the ground. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. While the meat was still in their mouths, God says, you know what? You don't want what I've been giving you. You don't trust how I've been taking care of you. you you're going to uh, continue to complain against my goodness. Well, I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to make the quails fly low so you can grab them. And the person that gathered the least had gathered six. 60, 60 bushels of quail. Now, I want you to think about the fact that God had been providing them with fresh bread, had been giving them fresh manna every morning. They didn't have to work for it. All they had to do was pick it up. But now Israel complained that they were tired of the manna and that they wanted some meat. And God says, okay, I'm going to give you some meat until it comes out of your nostrils. The people who gather, and the person who gathered the least amount of, them, of birds gathered 60 bushels of birds. Now, can you imagine 60 bushels of dead quail, uh, uh, thousands and thousands of dead quail, the one that gathered the least had 60 bushels? Now, those birds were fresh for the first two or three days. <laughs> but what about two or three weeks into it? We can only imagine the stench of thousands and thousands of dead birds. Israel didn't want the fresh manna that God gave them. No, no. Now they ended up with dead, rotting carcasses of thousands and thousands of birds. While the meat, the scripture says, was still at, between their teeth, God struck them with sickness because of their unjustified complaining. It goes without saying that they had ticked God off. Verse 1 says that the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Israel angered God, God to the point that God began to destroy them. While, he, while they had been guilty of complaining on, on other occasions, this time Israel literally pushed God to God's limit. And God began to rain fire from heaven on them. Fire in the Old Testament was a symbol of the judgment of God. But fire was also a symbol of the purifying acts of God. This tells me that God's mercy, friends, has his limits. That while God is extremely merciful and forgiving and long-suffering, don't ever push God to God's limit. God has two sides. God is not only a God of judgment, of mercy rather, but God is also a God of judgment. Don't you know that the same water you drink can be the same water that you, that you drown in? The same fire that heats your house and cooks your food can be the same fire that burns your house down. God has two sides. When we complain, we are ultimately suggesting to God that God doesn't know how to take care of us.
It is as if we're saying to God, God, you obviously don't know how to take care of me because if you did, then you'd know what kind of house I deserve to live in. <laughs> You, 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 if you knew how to take care of me, you'd know what kind of job that, that, I, that, that, that you would have blessed me with a job that I think I'm worth. Or God, if you knew how to take care of me, you would know that I only wear the finest and of designer clothes. So what we're telling God is because you don't wear the finest clothes and you don't have the ideal job and you don't live in the ideal house, that by complaining, you are suggesting that God doesn't know how to take care of you. Your friends, that kind of complaining oh, uh, angers the Lord. It angers the Lord. When we complain, you have no right to complain because when you complain, you displease the Lord. But wait, there's one last lesson. It is this. We have no right to complain because when we complain, we need Christ to appeal on our behalf. When we complain, we need Christ to appeal on our behalf. Verse 2 says, Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and, and, when, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. Israel was guilty and deserved to be destroyed. They were complaining against the Lord by expressing the fact that they were tired of eating the manna that God had provided for them. So God sent judgment upon them, and many of the people of Israel were destroyed. Therefore, they, began, they ran to Moses and cried out to Moses and said, and begged Moses to ask the Lord not to destroy them. And Moses went to God on their behalf and pleaded for, on their behalf. And, and, and God heard Moses' prayer, and the anger of God, God was subsided. You see, Moses pleaded their case. He interceded for them. Moses symbolized a kind of mediating figure. He was a symbol of a go-between or a high priest. And in the Old Testament, the job of the high priest was to go into the Holy of Holies in the temple on the Day of Atonement and to uh, intercede on behalf of the sins of the people. However, Moses was really a type of, an, of another high priest. He's pointing to a greater high priest. Moses is a type of Jesus Christ, the highest and most holy of the high priests. The only reason, friends, that you and I are still here today is because Jesus, our high priest, has been praying for us. When we were too mean to live and wasn't fit to die, Jesus prayed for us. When we were lost and held bound, Jesus prayed for us. When we complained against God, God's goodness in our lives. Jesus prayed for us. The Bible says of Jesus that he ever lives to make intercession for us. The scripture says that when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So may we stop complaining so much. No, life is not going to always be as we desire for it to be. Sometimes we're going to have to deal with circumstances that are less than ideal. Some people will unfortunately receive pink slips from their jobs or a diagnosis from a doctor that they have cancer. And we all, all of us are tired of dealing with the uncertainty of this pandemic. But the being children of God, however, does not exempt us from misfortunes. But even during those difficult moments, we should pray for the strength not to complain. A better course of action is to find something about which we can tell God thank you. The scripture says, count it all joy when you find fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We should thank God in the good times, but we should also thank God in the bad times. We should thank God when the sun is shining, but we ought to also thank God when the stormy winds are blowing in our lives because even in the bad times, we know that all things are working together for our good. Story is told of an old lady and her son who lived together in an sh old shotgun house, and that old shotgun house had a raggedy roof on the top that had holes in it, and one night a terrible storm came through that town and that storm was so harsh that it blew the roof clean off of that house. And while it was raining, it rained on the old lady, her son, all of her furniture, everything got wet up because they had no roof. But the next day, the, the young man came to his, his mother and looked at his mother sitting in a rocking chair with a big smile on her face. And the young man said, Mama, why are you smiling? Don't you realize we, that it rained last night? Don't you know we faced a storm? Don't you know we got all wet up? Why are you smiling? She said, Son, I know it looks bad, but, uh, and I know we got wet up. And all of our furniture was destroyed. But, son, just a while ago, a man came by from the federal government. 
Uh, and the man uh, said that the president has declared this area a disaster area. And son, I, for, for many years, I, I've wanted to replace the roof on our house, but I never could afford to, to replace the roof on our house. But son, uh, the federal government is going to replace the roof on our house, and they're going to do it free of charge. That's why I'm smiling, son, as opposed to, to complaining, because I, I, I've looked at the situation from a different standpoint. We ought to learn to find something about which to be thankful. We ought to learn to thank God when, when you got money in your pocket, it, but thank God when you're broke and don't have a dime. Thank God when you're healthy, but thank God even when you're sick because you can look around and someone is sicker than you. So brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I want to live the, in the words of, the, of that great song. It says, I've had some good days and I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some lonely nights, but when I look around and think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days so I won't come plain. Yes, sometimes the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road. And I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But you know what? He knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes can't see. And so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Why? Because God's been so good to me. He's been so good to you and me. Although this, uh, our weary eyes can't see. And more than the world could ever be. God God has been so good to you and to me. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Friends, we have no right to complain. If you receive it, give the Lord praise. Thank you so much, Dr. Maurice Watson, for that timely word. Well, you guys, that about wraps it up for our very first virtual fall revival. And I pray that it blessed you just like it blessed me. Sometimes we just need that extra encouragement, that extra inspiration to just push us to keep on going. And I pray that this week's revival did that for you. We want to give a special thanks to all of the pastors that participated this week. Reverend Sylvia Sumter, Pastor Burton Sherbert, Dr. Charlene Monk, Bishop Herbert Jackson, Pastor Sylvia Peoples, and our preacher for tonight, Dr. Maurice Watson. And to all of the amazing musical guest artists that joined us, thank you so much for giving up your time and your talent to us. And special thanks to our sponsors, Pope Funeral Homes and Levi's Restaurant. Thank you all so much. Be sure that you share this revival with somebody else. Somebody else needs the same encouragement that you got. So be sure to share this. I'm Ronette Rollins, and I pray that you have an amazing rest of this year. And be sure to check us out on Praise 104.1 FM and My Spirit DC. You all be blessed.